What's up everybody and welcome back to part 9 of my Ken Kratz book review. The series where I'm going over what Ken Kratz states in his book compared to what we learned on Making a Murderer compared to what we learned after both have since come out. Um, and again, just because I'm reading the book, going over the book, saying what he says in the book does not mean I believe anything that he says and that especially goes for this chapter this chapter was very hard to read um just if you didn't like ken kratz before and thought maybe you were going to come around on him this isn't the chapter to read if you didn't like ken kratz before you're definitely not going to like him now and if you liked Ken Kratz before and uh, can still say you do after this chapter, I don't know. I don't know what there is to say. It's, he is one of the most terrible people involved at this point in time in a legal system that is supposed to be doing the right thing but can say the things he said about a minor, about a child. He outright, point blank, words on the page, makes fun of a child. This guy was the district attorney in the area and is okay with making fun of children. Of course, he was also okay with texting clients uh, that were domestic abuse victims as, as well. I mean, that's, it sh this shouldn't be of any surprise just based on the type of person that he is, but this is absolutely disgusting. Okay, we're going we're gonna to jump in. We're going to jump in here. Chapter 9 is called The Accomplice, and of course, it's about Brendan Dassey. At the time, 16 years old, and a minor. There's something he states in this chapter that he actually has nothing to do with. It's just the law in the state that is mind-boggling to me, but we'll get there shortly. Here we go. Early on in the chapter, he talks about how Brendan Dassey, he calls Brendan Dassey, is a shuffling, mumbling young man with bad skin and a broken bowl haircut and has a tiny promise of a future. This, my friends, coming from the district attorney, the guy that's in charge of the case, or the guy that was in charge of the case, is making fun of a child, making fun of a minor, making fun of a child whose IQ level is very low. Could you imagine? Could you imagine that somebody in his position of power would make fun of a child. I don't care. He's, it's, ah, uh, it's, it hurts. It, it's disgusting. A shuffling, mumbling young man with bad skin and a broken bowl haircut. Why? Just, just why? Does it make you feel good to make fun of children? Come on. He states, before Brendan Dassey confessed, he had no reason to believe that anyone else was involved other than Steve and Avery. Or, or, could it be you had no idea what happened, couldn't pin it on Steve and Avery without the help of someone else, so you fed Brendan Dassey a story. A child, a minor, a 16-year-old with a well below... IQ intelligence, you fed him a story that you knew if you said it enough times to him, you could get him to repeat it because he's supposed to be able to trust the police and could easy, easily be led that if you fed him the story, you could get the information you wanted so you could pin it on his uncle Stephen Avery. Allegedly. You know, 
Could it be more of that, that you fed him everything you wanted him to say and then he was able to feed it back to you? Talks about how it was Kayla that turned them on to Brendan Dassey. Uh, he states that Thomas Fossbender and Mark Weirgart, while interviewing Dassey, hoped to gather a nugget or two of incriminating evidence against Brendan Dassey. Hoped to gain incriminating evidence, not hope to gain the truth of what actually happened. He states they're going in there already with the mindset that this child, this 16 year old minor, uh, was already guilty. They wanted him, they got him, or they didn't, probably didn't necessarily want him at the time. They wanted somebody who was able to repeat the story they wanted to tell. So they got Brendan. Hoped to gain incriminating evidence, not hope to gain the truth of what happened. Let that sink in there, that that's what Ken Kratz said in his book. Hope to gain incriminating evidence, not hope to gain the truth. Uh, he states, Brendan admitted to seeing toes in the fire. Toes! Toes! Toes are smaller than this pinky finger. Toes! In a fire that was reportedly had flames as tall as the garage. You saw toes. Maybe you could believe him if he said he saw a torso or a leg. But toes, 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 toes. Toes are, are smaller than this. Especially on a woman the size of Teresa Halbach. I don't know. I'm not going to put my feet on camera. But toes. You saw toes in this giant, allegedly this giant fire. Toes. Toes. Says... Brendan's mother gave consent for a second interview. Now, here's what I mentioned earlier. This part baffles me and has nothing to do with Ken Kratz. He said his mother, Brendan's mother, gave consent for a second interview, even though in Wisconsin they don't need permission and they don't require a lawyer present when interviewing children, a minor. That's strange has nothing to do with making a murderer, has nothing to do with Ken Kratz, has nothing to do with Ken Kratz's book. That law in Wisconsin absolutely needs to be changed. If it's not changed yet, it needs to be changed right freaking now. You can interview children without the presence of a lawyer or a parent. You can get children to do anything, say anything. Ken Kratz states, Stephen told Barb to tell her kids not to talk to cops. And he says that as a bad thing. But can you blame him? Someone that spent 18 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit? Of course he's not going to trust police. Are you kidding me? Would you? If you were framed and set up and all of the information that came out about that particular first case, would you trust police? Nope. I, I sure wouldn't. Ken Kratz states, Barb's present at the interview with Brendan Dassey, the minor, the 16-year-old, wouldn't have helped things. Nope, it wouldn't have. It wouldn't have helped Ken Kratz. It would have helped Brendan Dassey. I want to say the people doing this, like Mark Weirgart, Thomas Fassbender, Ken Kratz, knew what they were doing and were smarter than Brendan Dassey. And they probably were. But look at what Ken Kratz did that made him step down as the district attorney. I mean, they've got to be smarter than Brendan, smarter than Brendan's mother. They, they knew what they were doing when they're stating that Brendan's mother wouldn't have helped things at Brendan's interrogation, Brendan's interview. And they're right, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have helped them. But they would have helped a minor. They would have helped a child. They would have helped a 16 year old with a below level IQ intelligence. But it would have interfered with you getting your story of what allegedly happened. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Disgusting. It says that Brendan's mother was told about the interview 
and I hope she did not attend because it would have interfered with you getting your story. Not the truth, your story. He, he then makes fun, Ken Kratz makes fun of Brendan Dassey once again. He says, watching the interview back, he didn't know if Brendan Dassey was just as dumb as a post. As dumb as a post. He's making fun of a child, a minor, that has a below level IQ intelligence, stating that he didn't know if he was just as dumb as a post. This is your district attorney. This is the person we're supposed to trust with the doing his job correctly, doing the right thing by the letter of the law, and he's making fun of children. What a guy. Says without, Ken Kratz states, without Brendan Dassey's statement, they never would have got a search warrant for the garage. Yeah, and he's, he's right. They never would have got a search warrant for the garage if it wasn't for Brendan Dassey's statement. You know, the statement where they fed Dassey the information they needed in order to get that search warrant, allegedly. So they could do what they needed to do to frame Stephen Avery, allegedly. Just, what, what a guy. So without Brendan Dassey's statement, they wouldn't have been able to get a search warrant and they wouldn't have been able to pin everything allegedly on Stephen Avery. So without a lawyer present, without a parent present, because it would interfere in getting their story, so they fed Brendan the information they needed in order to get a search warrant to pin the crime on Stephen Avery. Allegedly. This, what a disgusting chapter. Definitely the hardest to read. The next chapter, chapter 10, is called The Decision. That was a hard chapter to read, guys. Um, so angering, so infuriating, so disgusting that people who you're supposed to trust to do the right thing just aren't doing it. Even, let's... Man, I don't know. So gross. So gross. What a disgusting human being this guy is. This is literally all you can say about him. There's nothing else you can say about Ken Kratz other than he's just a disgusting human being. If it wasn't for this, it was what he did to someone he was representing that was a domestic abuse victim. Just, there's no redeeming qualities about this person whatsoever. Anyway, we'll be back with chapter 10, coming soon. Hope you are all having a great day out there today, and I'll see you again soon.